it just comes right off of the meat. My mom doesn't like me using all her kitchen stuff with python hands, but sorry mom. And would you look at that guys? Take a look at it now. I decided to put the cover on. Woohoo! What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Look at these two little buddies here. We got Piper and we got Maverick. Oh, kisses. Mom, we got kisses. These guys are my little golden retriever dudes. Maverick is getting bigger by the day and so is Piper. They're still both little pups. Piper and Maverick are going to play tug of war with a palm tree branch. If you guys are new here, welcome. Meet these guys, meet me, I'm Landon Cher. If you guys are not new to the channel, these guys you've probably seen before. I have all sorts of animals on my channel, including exotic animals like chimpanzees. We got some cool little puppy dogs, and then also we catch snakes out in the Everglades a lot of times. Usually we're not killing them, but today, We've got ourselves a python. This one I pulled from my freezer. It's from the Florida Everglades. If you do not know the situation with these pythons, this is just a little one here. They can get upwards of 18 feet, 19 feet, basically 20 feet long. They can eat alligators, deer, mice, rabbits, otters, aquatic birds that migrate to different areas so they're affecting other ecosystems. They're really bad for our ecosystem down here in South Florida in our Everglades. They're really messing it up. People mess it up as well. A lot of people, you know, I've come on here before and people have bashed me for all this stuff. I'm really trying to just do a good thing. By law, if I catch one of these snakes, I can't let it go. So the only other thing to do with it is take one, feed it out to one of Chandler's Wildlife's Cobras, which is coming up hopefully on the channel. Try and do some cool stuff with it. And today, as you guys can see here, we've got something new to try. I've never eaten python before. My friends have, catch them all fishing, Jacob Fetter, but I've never tried it personally myself and I'm not opposed to it. So what we've got here is a little python. Like I said, this one is probably a year old. In just a year, these guys can get upwards of six feet, depending on how well they're eating. And to clean off this sliminess he has on him. This guy here is about four feet long. Um, might be a little less, but look at that. Already as big as this table here. Literally, it's like the same exact dimensions if we were to stretch him out a little bit. Such a beautiful snake and such a shame that they're born into this situation. But guys, if you want to find out more about pythons, you can look it up. You can watch more of my videos where I go into it, where we're out there catching them in all these different situations. This little guy here though, we're gonna have to start this process. Basically, if you guys wanna know the recipe, we're gonna be pan frying them today. Fried, you can basically fry anything and it's gonna taste good. So I don't know how this is gonna be, but fingers crossed. We got some olive oil, of course some Everglades seasoning, some green onions, some lime, salt and pepper, and that's gonna be about it. Basically, we're gonna have to take the skin off, expose the meat, clean the meat up a little bit, chop it up, put it in the fryer, and see just what it tastes like. You can see this beautiful pattern on the top. That helps keep him camouflaged, helps him blend in while he's cruising through the grass. But we've got this light pattern down here and these other different types of scales. These are the scales they use that move them across the ground. What we have to do for the best clean cut here, what they've found for this tough skin is to take a sharp razor blade and just slowly work our way down. Now, I don't wanna ruin the skin I want to try to keep the skin as in, uh, in as good of condition as we can. Maybe use it for some products like some wallets or something like that. Not really sure. My friends like to do that stuff, so I'll give it to them for that. We're just going to easily go down here with a sharp razor blade. It's not too hard on this little guy. The bigger the snake, the thicker the scales. I tried doing this on a bigger snake when we were cutting it open in another video, which is one of my most viral videos right now. Thank you guys for all the support. And in that video, you'll see the big snake ate a rabbit. Out in the Everglades, like I said, they eat everything. And it's not their fault. It's just that they're stuck in this situation and that's what they naturally do. The only problem is because of them and because of how fast they breed, they're almost unstoppable. And anything that comes in their path is probably gonna be a meal. Would you look at that? We're just going down there all the way to the tail and we're done. Now we wanted to cut into this skin just this first layer but we don't want to cut too deep because then we'd be opening up 
stuff on the inside that we don't necessarily have to. Stuff that might get a little nasty. So I've started working on it. As you can see, and guys, this meat is looking pretty good. If you guys can't watch this, I'm sorry. Check out some more videos on the channel. I'm just trying to use this whole snake, make its life worth something. Hopefully it tastes good. What we have to do right now is we have to peel this skin back. We have to remove the skin off of it because we can't eat it. So we peel it back just like this. And if you grab the skin, it will just peel right off. You can see as we pull, it just comes right off of the meat. Beautiful looking meat, really white. Pythons are supposed to have a lot of mercury in the meat. So just like tuna or some other fish, um, you're not supposed to have too much of it all the time. But I think a little guy like this will probably be fine. And would you look at that, guys. I really don't know how to feel about this. Guys, I do eat meat, but I've never eaten python before. So this is all gonna be really new. and. For guys that are saying, don't kill the snake, don't do whatever, I had no choice in killing it. Just to, I have to make it clear. But anyhow, we're here now, right? So I don't exactly know. I believe there's more meat here and more meat here. The bones kind of run down the center. I'm thinking that we can cut this down. Let's just try to cut a piece down and see what happens. Going through some bone there. So we have our little piece here. It looks pretty meaty. We might be able to just eat it around the bone. That might be the best approach. There's a lot of these thin little bones in here. You can see it better on the underside of the thicker part of the snake. It's pretty cool. Not the typical way I like to study animals. Usually I study them in their natural habitat alive. But it is kind of cool being able to look at the anatomy of this animal and really learn more about it. When I was looking at the head, you could see all the muscles in its jaws and just how flexible it is and really how powerful this animal is. Super cool to be able to see that. Getting these little palm tree things off here. As I'm going through this, I tried taking some meat off the sides there, cutting down the bone, kind of like a fish. But there's so many bones in this thing. I feel like these thin pieces are ready to go. We're gonna throw them in here. And then what we're actually gonna do is this whole piece and we're just gonna fry it like that because it's basically the same. It's just not broken up into little pieces. To get this ready, we're gonna take a little bit of olive oil, just a little bit, not too much. Put this in, might as well. Look at that. It doesn't really smell too bad. It has kind of a fishy smell, to be honest. We're gonna take a little bit of lime juice just a little bit. My mom doesn't like me using all our kitchen stuff with python hands, but sorry mom. We're gonna take some Everglades seasoning, of course, because it's from the Everglades. It says it's for fish and chicken, but maybe it'll taste like chicken. Let's see. Just a little bit there. Remember, we gotta coat everything. You can never really use too much of this stuff. Some salt and some pepper. Lastly, some fresh chopped green onion. And, whoop, lost some there. Washed off the table already from all the juice nastiness. And guys, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna mix it up so that lime juice and olive oil gets all around it. The seasoning covers it. But we have to head inside because it's looking like it's about to rain. We're gonna cook this thing up, throw it in the pan. I can't wait to try it. So we're inside now. It might be a little grainier. The lighting isn't too bright in here for the camera to pick up. But anyhow, we've got to mix this all up. You can see the underside has not been coated by anything. That's smelling really good. Got a little lime in there. It's a very freaky thing to be making with this tail down here. Look at this thing. Very weird. You know, I could be eating chicken right now, but instead, we're eating some wild caught python and saving our Everglades. Now we've got this ready to go. I'm going to take some olive oil here without getting my nasty hands on it. I'm going to put this straight in the pan. This is kind of an older pan. Put it on high. The oil seems to be hot now. Oh, there we go. Let's see how these little pieces come out. Put these next two in. Got that stuff on there. Gonna throw a little extra seasoning just to make sure it gets on. I think these little pieces are all the way cooked. Gonna just pick them up here. It's kind of a weird thing to pick up. 
hope it's all the way cooked. I'm not a bad chef. I will, I will give myself that. I was gonna taste test it, but I think we need to cook the big one and try it all at the same time because I really don't know how this is gonna taste. And I wanna be, I wanna be surprised, hopefully pleasantly surprised. I've never tried python before, let alone this recipe. So if it doesn't taste good this time, maybe we need to do a different recipe in the future. Got our big piece here. What I wanna do is lay it in there just lightly. Coil it around itself so it fits in the pan. Look at that. Oh, look, at, it's moving. It's moving. It's just kind of moving there with all that heat. Guys, what do you think this is going to taste like? This is looking really creepy to me, but I think it's going to taste pretty good. Comment down below if you would eat this, and also comment down below what you think it's going to taste like. Little extra seasoning here. It's cooking through. I don't know if we should flip this thing. I don't know if we can. Let's see if we can try without burning ourselves. Woo! All right, all right. Not too bad. This is the weirdest piece of meat. Take a look at it now. I decided to put the cover on. Woo! We flipped it now. I'm trying to get under it with the spatula. I'm not as good as SpongeBob with one of these things apparently. Just gotta get under it like this. Hopefully it doesn't fling hot oil on me. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Now if we can just lay it in here gently and coil it back up. It seems to kind of want to do it on its own. It is a little stiff. I've heard that about python meat before. I've heard that it can be a little tough. Um, there may be ways to treat that, but this is how we did it today. All right, here it goes nothing, guys. Hopefully I don't die of hyper. I don't know what's gonna happen here, but forget that thing. And forget these things too, because I think we're just gonna go right in for it. Without a fork, without a knife, it's a little hot. So I'm gonna get these that have cooled down a little bit. Start with this little piece here. That's really good. That's not bad at all. Hold on here. I'm not trying to get any bones, but that's white meat. You see all those little bones there. You don't want to eat any of those. It's pretty easy to eat the meat right off the bone. Now that's a little piece there. No sauce, just a little seasoning. It really just tastes like chicken. Um, I know a lot of people say that, you know, because that's what normal people can compare it to that other people know about. But it has a lot of similarity to the taste of fried chicken. Pretty good though. I was not expecting that. Let's try the big one. We're going in for the bite here. All right, try to get it off the bone. That's really good too. I could eat this whole thing. A little bit of meat there. You can see the meat, after it's cooked, just peels right off actually. You can kind of peel it on down. Not much meat on this little guy. Maybe a big one we'll try another time. Pretty good stuff, let's try the top. More meat than I was expecting that's on it once you start digging in. But guys, this is a success. I feel like my mouth, my mouth's all dirty. Sorry for my, my manners. This is really good. I could sit here and enjoy this whole thing. Now, I'm going to eat as much of it as I can. I don't know how long it's going to last in my refrigerator. But guys, this is, this is a, a 10 out of 10 success. I would say it's not the best thing I've ever eaten, but it's not tough. The way we did it, I don't know if it's because it's a young snake, not chewy at all. More python missions to come this summer. It's getting hot and these pythons are coming out. If you haven't seen the video we did last time with my sister, go check that out. My sister grabbed her first python. Super cool, guys. Thank you for checking out this video. If you liked it, give it a like. Subscribe if you want to see more crazy cool animal adventures. And I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Peace.